I apologize for my laptop being here. I was told in seminary not to do this, but I am a little older than some of the people I went to seminary with, so <laughs> this is quite updated for me. I thank you so very much for having me here in your sanctuary today. Thank you for allowing me the grace to be with you, to worship with you, and to take the opportunity to speak with you on this Sunday, even as we celebrate the beginning of Pride Month. As our illustrious pastor said, I'm the Reverend Andrea Vassell. I am a little girl from Brooklyn. Well, I was born in the Caribbean, but I'm a Brooklyn girl. I was raised by an amazing single mother who decided to raise children regardless of everything, and boy, was there everything. And she brought us to this country from the Caribbean, and we have lived here and loved this country for decades. I am happy to be here. I bring you greetings from where I serve in the New Jersey Association Social Justice and Witness Task Force, where we work for justice in every way we can at the intersection of faith. In the tradition of the United Church of Christ, where all are welcome, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we work to ensure that people from everywhere who look different, who look the same, who speak the same language, are all welcomed here in the body of Christ. I will get into something that hit me hard this week, and I ask you to journey with me. I like to garden. I like getting my hands dirty. I have special gardening shoes and gloves. I buy way too much garden material, and I fancy myself a miniature farmer. I don't know how that happened. I grew up in Brooklyn most of my life. But I love gardening, and so the springtime of the year is the time when I am happiest, Pastor Ron. I get ready, I map out the backyard, I do all the things. The people in Home Depot know me, they say hi when I go by. And this year was no different. The only, well, there was a slight difference. I decided to do it bigger this year. My wife is still wandering and shaking her head. And so this year, I decided instead of just tomatoes and herbs, I was going to do beets. I was going to do cabbage. Let me tell you something. I have about eight different types of peppers, sweet and hot, in my garden. I went ahead. I started growing peanuts. Don't ask. <laughs> I grew everything, and I was so happy. I demarcated everything. I put down the barriers and stones, and Pastor Ron, I felt so proud. I was taking pictures and sharing with friends. And I was done. My friend flew up from Texas to help me to finish it, because she knew something more about this than I did. And on Wednesday morning, I walked outside because first thing in the morning, before coffee, I have to go outside and check the plants. I walked outside, and all my wife heard from the top floor was, no, the deers. <laughs> yeah, someone else apparently has been there. The deers got in, and they felt like they were at a smorgasbord. And they went through the garden. They took the top off of all the tomatoes. They particularly liked the potatoes. And of course, they went for what we call deer lettuce, which was the hostas. I was hurt. I, I mean, really, really hurt. I was hurt. I even cried a little. Because I had done so much work to get this garden going. And I thought I was done. I invested the work. I did what was needed. And I thought, I'm going to do this because, let me tell you, I'm going to coast for the rest of the summer, and I am going to show off with my potatoes and my tomatoes. And I knew that somehow God did it again. 
God decided to make sure that my sermon was lived before it was preached. <laughs> and so I, am, I was brought back to the Genesis text, the one that was just read in your hearing, where God created and God created day after day, day one, day two, day three, and God kept going. And on the seventh day, God said, whew, thank me. <laughs> I am done for a while. And so God rested. Because God, I, I suspect that God felt pretty good about what God did. But friends, what the scriptures didn't tell us after God rested, scriptures didn't say God stopped. The scripture never said God quit. The scripture never said God went on to another solar system and did something else. It said God rested, suggesting that there was at some point the action was restarted. And after I cried about the garden, I was reminded maybe, maybe I needed to rest. I went outside, Pastor Ron, and I looked at all of the, <laughs> I tell you, I looked at all of the hustos, I looked at all of the beautiful petunias, everything just eaten the top. They didn't pull everything out of the ground, they just ate the top off as if to taunt me. And after I, was, I, I decided not to have venison soup, I went ahead and I went back out and I started walking around. And what I realized was this. They had eaten off the top, but the roots were still intact. They had eaten the leaves, but the roots were still there. I suspect that when God did creation and all of that upheaval, if you can imagine it, mountains going up, rivers forming, oceans bubbling, creatures walking out of the ocean going, what? I suspect that in the middle of all of that chaos, when God rested, God still had more work to do. The work was not finished. But the foundation for creation was well laid. And I suspect that when God came back, God had to do a little bit of, you know, replanting of some stuff, a little bit of shoring up here and a little bit of shoring up there. But the work of creation had started. In the Matthew text, we see where Jesus comes and Jesus had done all the things Jesus had done. And he is saying, I am going now. It's his farewell discourse. It's the end of his ministry. We know Jesus was announced born, <laughs> pursued by Herod. He preached in the temple, was baptized by John. He was, found his disciples, led them, did all the things, healed, raised people from the dead, and was arrested, prosecuted, crucified, and raised from the dead. Of course, the Matthean writer believed that Jesus was coming back to reinstate the throne of David. He, a lot of people thought, this is it. We are going to get out from under the Roman Empire. This guy is the real deal. Others thought, well, he was a prophet and he was going to prophesy. Some people, everyone had a different idea about who Jesus was supposed to be. And here he was, he was getting ready to leave. But Jesus, wait, the work is not done. We're still under the Roman Empire. But wait, Jesus, the work is not done. There are still widows. There are still people to be healed. But wait, God, how are you going to rest? I mean, creation is not done. The water is still bubbling. And even though the work wasn't done, God still rested. And even though the work wasn't done, Jesus was still telling us, go into all the world and preach the gospel. All authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, and I'm going to be with you always, even to the end of the age, or even to the perfection of the vision of the earth. But wait, Jesus, you can't leave. 
Jesus, what are we going to do? I will send you a comforter. And so last week we celebrated Pentecost, the coming of the comforter. And the early church was started, and just like creation, where everything went up, and just like when Jesus was here and all hell broke loose, here came the Holy Spirit starting the early church, and again, upheavals. And the early church was started. People were killed. People fell dead by the power of the Holy Spirit for lying about their wealth, but we're not going to talk about Ananias and Sapphira. But things happened, and we wonder, how can this be if this is the perfection of God's creation? How can this be if Jesus was supposed to come and bring peace? How can this be? I'll tell you how it can be. It can be because the work of God's creation did not end. It can be because the inauguration of God's kingdom through Jesus Christ did not end. It can be because the coming of the Holy Spirit didn't end. It was all a great beginning. It was all a great beginning. And as the title of my sermon says, that was a nice beginning. What do we do now? We are in Pride Month. It's the beginning of the month. I have gone back a little bit, and I cheated a little. I looked at your history. I looked at what this church has done. I looked at who you have been. And I have to say, I wish I was here for the journey. An amazing congregation living into God's word and God's kingdom and the love of God in the world for justice, for mercy. A little work for racial justice, for LGBT justice, for justice for women, all of it coming together to create the beloved community. That was you. But in the last couple of years, we've had some setbacks, haven't we? <laughs> in the last couple of years, we have seen Roe brought down. In the last couple of years, we have seen legislature, and even today, going up that pushes back at LGBT justice, particularly trans rights. In the last couple of years, we have seen people putting legislation and action in place that would seek to erode the great work of God creating the beloved kingdom that has gone forth. And the truth is, pastor, some of us are tired. I've been in this fight for a long time, Reverend Ron. I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> I have been fighting for this thing way back in the 80s, back in the 70s. And many of you have been doing the good work of creating or continuing God's creation toward perfection. And now we see these changes and we're saying, <sighs> many of us are discouraged. Is anyone else, did anyone else get hit real hard when Roe was turned down? It feels like everything you had done had come to a grinding halt. But creation is not ended. The work of God creating the earth and bringing us to, into God's perfection is not ended. The work of Christ in the earth, creating a community where we do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God is not ended. The call to love our neighbor as ourselves and to love our God with all our heart is not ended. And so on this first Sunday of Pride Month, I want to say to you, uh, Union Congregational, you started a great work. God has started a great work in you as a congregation, and God has started a great work in you as individual members of the body of Christ. If you think back to your own baptism, if you think back to where God has brought you from, it's an amazing work that was started. But my friends, I'm here to tell you, even with all the upheavals that happen and are happening around us, think back to creation. Mountains going up, rivers cutting through landscape, oceans boiling. God was still in the midst. 
Jesus coming and we believing, that, the people believing that everything was going to be okay. Now that he's here, oh, no. He came, and when he came, every, some people believed that all of the oppression from the Roman Empire was going to end. He was going to inaugurate this new kingdom of God, and it was all going to end. But instead, the Roman Empire clenched down even more. But God was in the midst. The Holy Spirit came, and we thought, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the early church started and oppression got even more. Why am I telling you this? I'm here to tell you that regardless of what is happening around you, regardless of the shifts and the changes that we see that feels like we're not winning, God is in the midst. Regardless of what feels like chaos politically, Regardless of what feels like pushback on LGBT rights in this Pride Month, God is in the midst. God is still saying to us, go, declare my love to all nations, telling them of the radically inclusive love of Christ, the expansive love of God that includes all, and I am with you always. Every step you take, I am with you for justice, for love, for peace, for a beloved community. I am with you, even to the perfection of this walk. During this Pride Month, we remember all of those who have passed among the ancestors that we honored earlier. So far this year, 11 trans persons have been murdered. And those are only the ones that weren't misgendered, the ones that were reported as hate crimes, because so many of them are not reported. It feels like it's time to run and hide, my friends. But I am here to bring you good news. Behold, Christ, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love is with you always wherever you go. Continue the fight for justice. Continue to create a community where LGBT people, people of color, men, women, everyone feels welcomed into the love of God. Continue to do that work. Don't get discouraged because God is still creating. Jesus is still healing and loving and the Holy Spirit is still expanding within us. Behold, Christ is with you always, even to the perfection of this journey. God bless you.